Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my coding game Let's Play. Now, if you didn't see the first episode in this series, you can check out the link to the playlist in the video description where you can see that and all the other videos in this series. Remember, this isn't a tutorial series, this is a come along with me while I have a go at this sort of thing, although I will be explaining my thoughts along the way. Here we can see we are on a next, uh, another beginning uh, mission or, or challenge, and this one's called The Descent. Now, over here we have our code, but let's read what we have to do in The Descent. It says, destroy the mountains before your starship collides with one of them. For that, shooting the highest mountain on your path. Okay, so we have to keep shooting the highest thing. At the start of each game turn, so when our code gets started, you are given the height of eight mountains from left to right. And by the end of the game turn, you must fire on the highest mountain by outputting its index 0 to 7. So in nearly every programming language, I would, no, let me correct, in most programming languages, when you count, especially with indexes, you start from 0. So you 0 to 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is actually 8 different mountains, because you include the 0. Firing on the mountain will destroy part of it, reducing its height, and your ship, ship decays after each path. So we're, we're, maybe we're gliding down, maybe we're getting low on fuel or something. Victory conditions. We win if we destroy every mountain. I would have thought the victory condition would be we win if we land safely, but never mind. Lose conditions. Your ship crashes into a mountain. Okay, that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Or you provide an incorrect output or your program times out. Fair enough. Okay. Note, don't forget to run the tests by launching them in the test courses. We've got cases, we've got them down here, and there's some inputs and things down here. So this is the that was the actual goal. This is the game input now. So within the infinite loop, which we've got already here in our game code, while true, that's our infinite loop. Uh, read the heights of the mountains from the standard input. So it looks like, yeah, okay. Mountain height equals h. This represents that. No, okay, we'll get but we'll get to the code in a minute. So, um, yep, yeah, and print the standard output of the index for the mountain to shoot. Okay, um, inputs for one game turn. Uh, one integer mountain height per line. Each represents the height of one mountain given in the order of the indexes. Okay, output for one game turn. A single line with one integer, an index of the mountain to shoot. Constraints. Mountain H is uh, can be less than or equal to zero and less than or equal to nine. Okay, and the response time per turn is a hundred milliseconds. Interesting. Okay, so we've got a loop and it jumps through. It says for I in range uh, eight. So it looks like we're looping round eight times. Interesting. And it, uh, we've got some bits of um, comments here, and the, of the green stuff's the comments. Actually, we can we can make that a little bit bigger for you guys, can't we? There we go. That's even better, isn't it? So this mountain H represents the height of one mountain. Write an action using print to debug. Okay, so I see. So we're going to be going round. Um. Okay. So we're going to, I get it, I get it, what's going on here. And I think I've got an idea of what I want to do. So let's work this out. I think what we'll do, though, is we'll just undo the things that I've just done. And we'll write our code beneath this uh, bit here. So we're going to get this height. And what we need to do is we need to see if that height is bigger than the last height. So to do that, we need a record of the largest height so far or biggest mountain so let's do that within the game loop but before this for loop uh, we're going to call it uh, biggest and if I type if I misspell something don't worry about it I know what I mean you know what I mean it's cool uh, I'm dyslexic I, I probably haven't got a good idea anyway and we're going to just say biggest uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set it to zero Okay, so the biggest one is zero. And you can see there, uh, it's 
it's come out and it said it's uh, that it's a variable and it's a literal uh, zero. I'm not sure if that works well, but let's see. Can we? What if we set it to ten to begin with? Hmm, interesting. Can, how do I? I don't know if I need to force that to be an integer or not with the way that this works in Python, but let, let's see how it works. So 10 isn't a valid input for what we're doing. We're going to between um, we're going between 0 and 7, so we should never give it a 10. If we give it a 10, something's gone wrong. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say... Hmm. Now let's see. We, we actually need to remember two things. We need, we need to remember which mountain's the biggest and how high the biggest is. So uh, biggest, I'm going to put biggest M for biggest mountain. And then uh, we can get like biggest mountain height. Or we we'll could call it biggest I. Yes. Right, okay. Biggest mountain height. And we'll initialize that to zero. And we may as well... In let's, tell let's, let's initialize that to zero as well. Why not? Right, so we're now going to say, in this loop, we're going to get this mountain height. And we want to know if this mountain height is bigger than that biggest mountain height. So I think that's where we want to do an if statement. Now, we did these last episode. So let's see if I can remember that syntax for how to do it in Python. And this is where we know whether doing this stuff helps me remember. So we're going to say if this mountain height is bigger than the last mountain height, the biggest one we've got so far, colon, for the then, then we want to set the biggest mountain height equal to that new mountain height and we want to set the biggest mountain index I'm going to call it index so we there we go so it's better naming convention it's always good to name things really well um, to equal to I because it's this I value that we want to pass back. The I is the index. It's the it's the loop. Uh, we can see we're going in a range of eight here, and this I should give that back. Now, whether that's going to be one to eight because of the way this works in Python with this range, I don't actually know. We'll find out. So we're going to say like if the mountain's height, the current mountain height is larger than the biggest mountain height so far then we set the biggest mountain height to that mountain height and we also set the biggest index to that index and that's it we let that loop round and after the loops finished we just give it whatever the biggest index is i think that's it i think that's we've done it um it's that simple the only problem here, let's just, let's say, let's pretend, let's just run some code through in our head, some some thoughts, so to speak. Uh, let's say that our, we've looked at some mountains already, and the current mountain is like 30, and the new mountain is 40. So we say, if the new mountain, 40, is greater than our current mountain, biggest mountain so far, 30, then we'll do this, and it is bigger. And then that 30 will become the 40, and we make a note of the index which we send back. I think this is going to be okay. Right, let's play this um, now on this Descending Mountains test case and see if it works. Okay, so our code is running, and we've got various mountains here, and each time we go by, the ship is shooting the mountain. Very good. It appears to be shooting the highest one each time. And this is the highest one. It's descending mountains. So it's from left to right, apparently. Mountain 5's gone. And then we get mountain 6 and 7. There we go. It is working lovely. We just... Uh, there, we're clear for landing. Brilliant. And that worked fine. You can see here in the console output, if we go to the top, uh, we get the height of the mountain. So mountain 1... Oh, sorry. Mountain 0 to 7. And we outputted zero, standard output we did. And then we've got here your um, your spaceship targeted mountain zero. Your altitude is now nine. We get the heights of the various different mountains. So mountain zero 
is now zero in height. Therefore, the next highest one is mountain one. So we output one. And we do a nice shot and it's can boom. Our altitude is now eight. And you can see here that now we've got two mountains that are, have a height of zero. And the next highest mountain is seven. And we've outputted mountain number two, which is the one with height seven. So that's all good. Let's run the next test cases and see if that works as well for this code. So this one's called scattered mountains. So we've got, seems to have mountains of various different heights here. Uh, we've got a few going along, but it looks like we are targeting the correct mountains. We've actually just killed mountain four and missed mountain three out because it's not as high. Mountain seven's gone, I think. So mountain three and six will be next and our code is working for that. Fantastic. Now we've got a few more test cases, so let's just run through them and see if we're all good. I think the code that we've developed here for this should work for any scenario that this thing can throw at us. So we've got some here. You can see it's reducing the height of the mountains, but not completely getting rid of some of them. But again, we should be fine. Now I... Looking at the code here, I'm thinking, is there a way I can improve this? Can I make this better? Can I make it faster? And I think there is something we could do. Um, and I'll, I'll just quickly mention that. So basically, we've got this for loop going round every single range here. And we're going through each one of those, each mountain, and just checking, is it bigger? Is it bigger? Is it bigger? Is there a way for us to say, actually, we found the biggest one, let's stop checking through? Now, I think if you were expecting a particular height, let's say, for example, you knew the biggest mountain was going to be a height of 10. You could actually go, ah, it's a height of 10, let's set it that as the biggest mountain, get the index, and stop this for loop. But in this scenario, we don't actually know the heights of the mountains. So I think that this is actually all we can do. We can't, we can't leave this for loop. We have to keep checking around. So we've got a couple of different scenarios now. We've got uh, strong mountains too. So we've only got uh, what looks like to be four mountains with any height in this one. And again, it looks like it's setting things up quite nicely, going through and reducing them out. Fantastic. Love it. It's going good. Uh, we can maximize. We can full screen this. Now, for some reason, there's another test case here, which is just one big mountain that we can go on full screen with. And you can see that it, with each pass, that the ship is correctly targeting mountain number three, the one single big mountain. There are other mountains there, but if you look in the game code, their height is... Uh, their heights were zero. In the sorry not the game code the console output we can have a look as you go down here it's zero 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 eight zero zero seven six five four three two one you clear for landing and that is all the test cases for this one as you can see uh, if you know uh, coding or programming already these scenarios are really easy but if you're new to a new language it is good to make you think about this sort of thing so um, looking at the loops, looking at the statements and the conditions, and just really having a bit of a practice with it. I think it's fantastic. Let's submit that, and I would expect us to get 100%. Yes, of course. And of course, yes, we've learned loops. So there we go, folks. That one is done as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember all your thoughts, ideas, and questions down in the comment section. And if you want to keep up with this series and the other series I do, please do consider hitting that notification bell and setting it so that you get all of my updates and you will be able to see my live streams and videos. Take care. Thanks for watching. And for now, goodbye.